Hello! Episode 1 and 2 of the Play Dicely campaign is out right now. Link is in my bio, please go watch them. We're going to be doing a little mini recap of both episodes today, so if you haven't seen them, go watch them because spoilers! In my last recap video, I talked a lot about Danny, our DM. This time, I want to talk more about Elowen, my character. Because Elowen has had a couple of days. Elowen is a warlock. A freshly made warlock, in fact. As the last thing Elowen remembers before the campaign starts is speaking with her patron and being granted these powers. Now, Elowen is not the most social person in the world, and so when she wakes up in the desert and has four strangers' faces staring down at her, that is not her ideal situation to be in. To add to this, she was like dizzy and confused. All of these things had just happened to her. She was in the middle of a desert in a place she doesn't really know. And I guess she's gonna hitch a ride with these four strangers because all she wants is to get back to Starcross and catch up with Rhea and figure out what has just happened to her. But of course, when we get there, other people from the party also want to go meet Rhea. And then we start chasing chickens around. And it's a tough day for Elowen. <laughs> I don't know if she's spent this much time with strangers in a long time. You know, she tends to stick to the people she already knows. But as episode one ends, Elowen realizes that she probably should get to know these people better. Like at this beginning of episode one, her patron spoke to her and told her that they were going to be important. And honestly, she doesn't really have other options right now. She could go out on her own, but again, this is a world she doesn't know, and she has brand new powers, but she doesn't really know how to use them yet. So maybe sticking around with some other people is a good idea. At the beginning of episode two, we do a whole bunch of little contests in the middle of this festival. And again, this is not Elowen's forte. Elowen is extremely self-conscious. She doesn't like her body, and she does not like to be on a stage and presenting to people because she just imagines that most of the people in the audience are looking at her like, what is this kid doing here? And she can't deal with that. So she opts out of most of the contest that day. The idea that Daddy had to let the people whose characters weren't playing in the contest play NPCs was such a good idea. So fun. It's a great way to keep all the players involved, even when our characters weren't really part of a thing. I think as the day went on, though, Elowen kind of decided that she needed to kind of prove to the group that she was going to be useful to keep around. And so she did sign up for the one contest. That was what, that's what, that was basically her worst nightmare. <laughs> You know, they put her on a stage and asked her to speak in front of a group. Not a fan. But she is pretty smart, so she did manage to win that contest. <laughs> There's a really interesting moment after the contest as well when Gideon came over and gave her a pat on the back and went, Good job, kid! Because <laughs> the cast had talked after the first episode and we had realized that Gideon and Abe weren't there when Elowen had explained her curse to the rest of the party, so just the two of them still assumed she was a child. So I thought that moment was a really good move on Ryan's behalf to get that information out to him. Also a good roleplay moment because, you know, Elowen got to get mad at him and, you know, he turned to Rhea for confirmation, which Elowen hates. That is the worst. People do this to her all the time, where she tries to tell people something and they will turn to another adult in the room for confirmation because they don't believe Elowen, because she looks like she's nine. And so she gets, you know, a little angry with Gideon about it. But then Gideon handled it, you know, so nicely. He was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Not the strangest thing I've ever seen. And that is very interesting to Elowen. Elowen has this curse that she can't figure out. And for Gideon to say that he's heard of stranger things is very interesting to her. I don't know if Ryan knew what he was doing when he said that, but that was a great moment for Elowen to be like, oh, I can see how this guy is going to be important in my life, in my journey. So this has all been really interesting for Elowen because, like I said, she doesn't really like people very much. But this group has been very interesting for her thus far. And they seem kind, and they seem to treat her like the adult she is. And I don't know if that's something she's gotten a lot of in her life, or, you know, something that she's allowed to happen in her life before. And then we move into our first combat. This, I think, is one of my weaker points in d and is I, I don't think I flavor my combat very well. And I definitely could have done a better job in this episode, because this was actually a very important moment for Elowen as well. This is literally Elowen's first fight ever. She's never fought anything before. 
But I did think that this was a good fight to demonstrate what Elowen's fighting style is like. Elowen's goal in a fight is not to do damage. Elowen's goal is to stay alive. So when she uses Eldritch Blast, she can push people away. There's a great moment in the fight that worked exactly the way I wanted it to work, where one of the sand dogs was right up on her in melee, which is not where she wants an enemy ever. And she uses Eldritch Blast, even though it's at disadvantage because it's in melee range, she uses Eldritch Blast and it hits and pushes the dog 10 feet back. And then she can move 30 feet in the other direction without provoking an opportunity attack and get herself 40 feet away from this thing which ideally is far enough away that they can't make it to her in one turn. That's kind of like her main move at the moment, is being able to give people the opportunity to run away or to reposition themselves in a battle properly. I am a person who tends to play melee heavy damage characters. You know, I love a rogue, I love a barbarian, I just want to punch things really hard. That's generally how I play D&D. So Elowen is a new kind of exploration to combat for me. And I'm really excited. I love her so much. There's a lot ahead of her and of all of these characters. I mean, obviously I have to give major props to all the players in this game. They're all so incredible. Abe fighting is so cool. Drac fighting is so cool. He gets down on all fours and the lightning goes everywhere. What the fuck is that? And Nell as well has such cool flavor to her magic that I'm not really understanding and I am very interested to see what is going on with that character. And that kind of takes us to the end of episode two. We have an adventure ahead of us now. We've got a quest. We gotta go get that thing back. Actually, we really have to get that thing back. From what I know, that thing is really, really important. The first two episodes of the campaign were pre-recorded, but moving forward, we're going to be live streaming every other Saturday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Starting next Saturday, May 15th. So if you haven't watched the first two episodes yet, First of all, why are you listening to this? Second of all, get on it! Then please come join us next Saturday on Twitch. Come hang out with us, come talk about the campaign with us. We are just right now starting our main adventure. The first two episodes have kind of been like getting into the groove. Right now the adventure is kicking off. We're going. So I'm super excited and I hope you can join us. If not, the VOD will be up on the Dice Lady YouTube channel afterwards. So you can catch up there if you need to or rewatch the episode. That's all for now. I hope you guys are doing really, really well, and until next time, play nicely.